Hello, welcome back to this class. We are discussing the poem by T. S. Eliot, The Wasteland. You remember that we have already done the epigraph and also the dedication, and we also made some comments on the title. And we saw that the, uh, the title is uh, first of all it is a physical reality. The title is a physical reality. Post-war England or post-war Europe, you can consider it like that. Then second, you can say it is symbolic meaning it has got. It's a dying person, a dying civilization, a dying culture, a dying spirituality, symbolic, you can say. And the third meaning you can say that is exhaustion, a sense of exhaustion, exhausted, fatigue, as a waste, wasted person, you know. What is a wasted person? Suppose you continuously take drugs and also alcohol, then what will happen is after some time you become a wasted person. 99.9% of the people will be wasted, but some exceptions will be there, so we don't bother about exceptions. Mm -hmm. that, that may be aberrations. We have no idea about that. Okay. So now what we are going to do is, I am not going to explain word by word or reference by reference. First we will have a an aerial view of this point. And the first section is the burial of the dead, as we have seen. The burial of the dead. Now here you see, it begins like this. There are about 11 frames, you can see, 11 frames. Talking in terms of uh, shooting a film. You can see there are frames in one after another. So in this section, that is the first one, the burial of the dead. You have got 11 frames. Let us see, let us go through that first. And after going through that, you, you will get some ideas. And these ideas we put together and uh, you have an old, uh, what I must say, uh, an understanding of, a personal understanding, an original understanding of this poem. Only after that you must go in search of notes, in search of guides, and in search of other critical works. First you must form your own ideas. See your PG students. Therefore, first, whatever it may be the idea, don't worry. You can work in groups or you can work as indiv individually, you can work, but uh, you must have some idea of your own. You should generate some new ideas. Your idea will be a new idea, not able to put that. So, uh, I think that I will be able to help you to do that. You know. Like here, as we have seen, there are guides in this poem you now. Where this dandy's guide is Virgil. Then uh, Eliot's guide is Ezra Pound and your guide is myself or uh, my guide is yourself. <laughs> that depends. Understand. So we go. So the first frame is about April. April is the coolest month. Breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with the spring rain. Why is April the cruelest? That is the first brain. Cruelest month. Cruelest. That is the first frame here. Why is April cruelest? There are many reasons for that, but timing, let us let us let us consider this. Uh, if you want further discussion on this, we'll have later. But for the timing, let's see. It was immediately after the war. He wrote it in 1922. The First World War came to an end and first of all the period of the First World War was 1914-1919, isn't it? 1419, yes. That is the period. Now, the First World War shattered everything. Culture, religious beliefs, beliefs in progress, uh, beliefs in rational thinking and suddenly people came to know that wars are not caused by angry gods, but wars are caused by angry men. See, that God-centered view of life that just uh, simply disappears, vanished into thin air, you can say. See, that people have lost their faith, lost identity. For example, mass migration was there. Mass unemployment was there. Unprecedented scale. Never thought of before. And uh, there was also destruction, that is 
that you could never even think of, imagine, never think, never you can uh, think of in your wildest imagination. But mass destruction. Two million people died. Ten million people lost their jobs. As you can see, huh? flowed over the hill down King William Street. These people are going maybe in search of jobs and they are thinking only about themselves. Each one fixed his eyes upon his feet. Isn't it? So that is the thing. So, another, uh, at the micro level also you can see, this is a macro level situation. At the micro level you can see, Eliot's own life. He was, uh, he, his, he was suffering, some, suffering from some kind of nervous breakdown because of the matrimonial misery that he was, he was undergoing. So, putting all these things together, we can say, you see a fatigued world, an exhausted world, exhausted poet, a poet suffering from fatigue in the extreme sense, you can say. So, suppose there is a, there is a patient on, on ventilator support, and he is on ventilator, and you go to him and say that, see, if you run a race, you will get a cup weighing 10 kilo of gold selling. That is the cruelest thing you can do to him. Or you can say, borrowing Shakespeare, you can say, borrowing from Shakespeare, you can say, the most cruelest thing that you can do a, to, do a person. You can do to a person. Why? Because, as you know, he cannot do, he cannot move anything. He cannot move his limbs. The moment he is, the life support is removed, he will die. So England, Europe, the poet himself was in such a situation. That is the reason why. That may be the reason. There are many other reasons. But as far as we are concerned, I told you, we are having an aerial view of this poem, this section. So says April is the coolest. Think of that uh, patient imagery I, I just brought before you. You cannot move, you are dying, you see. And then somebody comes and says, you will get a, you will be given um, 10 kilograms weighing a gold cup if you run a race. The cruelest thing that you can do. Isn't it? So April is the cruelest one, breeding dialogues among mixing memory and desire, another. Memory for the past and desire for a future revival. Memory for the lost civilization, nostalgia. Memory for the lost civilization, the lost culture, the lost identity, the lost spiritual life, the lost intimacy between people, the lost uh, relations. That is memory for them. and desire for the revival. That is why the April is lost. That is one of the reasons. I told you in this case, I cannot say this is the reason and that is the reason. But we will discuss. Okay. Then we come to the second second frame that is of winter. This is spring. Spring, summer. And uh, of course, whenever we talk about the spring season here, there is another spring season comes to our mind. That is Joseph's Canterbury Tales. You know? The prologue to Canterbury Tales begins like this. One that April with his surest suite, the drought of March had pressed to the root and baked every vine in, in switch the cool of whisper to engendered east of flow. So that is another view, a very bright view of the spring season. Here it is, spring season is failure. Because you hear all the same thing, but you are unable to take it. So you are given something, you are unable to take it, what to do? So the situation has changed. So Joseph England, now that is utopia, you can say. If that is utopia, this is dystopia. That, that is why the April is the coolest one. The other is switch cool, sweet, sweet shepherds. See? And then they are entering into the every vine, every branch, every plant, every flower, every then. then what happened? There is life and revival. So whenever I think of this April opening of this, we also think of the April opening of Chaucer and the contrast there. The second is the winter. So in such a situation, 
the such a situation, you welcome the wasteland is. If you can say highland is, you can also say wasteland. Otherwise, you always always have to say the inhabitants of the wasteland, or you say denizens of the wasteland. So, for the time being, in single word commas, you can say the wasteland is. The wasteland is the welcome winter. Why? Because there's a April is the coolest month. Breeding lilacs of the red land. And then mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with the spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with the dried tulips. So that is the second frame. The wasteland is here welcome winter because they cannot act. They are income, they are in an exhausted situation. They are suffering from intolerable fatigue. They are suffering from a situation which is indescribable. There, there, there are no words to describe their situation because all of a sudden it was a huge blow on the first world war and its uh, consequences. So, winter capital, you don't know what. What is the use of acting? What is the use of going in for progress? What is the use of going to churches? What is the use of running after spirituality? What is the use of going after pilgrimages? It's absolutely no use. So, in the kept as well. Then comes a bright spot in this poem. Also, it ends with a tragic, tragic uh, comment, and that is summer surprises. The cassettes, that is the third. The, the third, you can say, third frame of this section. Summer surprise that's coming out of the stand with the sea with a shower of rain, we stopped in the colonnade and went on in sunlight into the half garden and drank coffee and talked for now. It's very beautiful. Intimacy, relationship, love, care, all, the, all those things that, have, that were there before the war. That's it. So they want coffee, they are having coffee and they have one or plenty of time for discussion. Plenty of time for intimate interchange of ideas. But then immediately you hear somebody who is being God, Cain, Rusin, Stamen, Aus, Little, at Deutsch. I am not Russian, I am, I come from Lithuania, I am pure German, Deutschland. Deutschland means German, Germany. So I'm pure German. That may be it could be some, they may have overheard something. Another person, another group of persons may be sitting at the next table and they are having coffee and they are talking. Uh, that could be like that. No? Okay, for more, more of this we will see later. And then he says, what is the, this, so this bright spot continues. What is it? Summer surprise just coming out of the Strandberg Sea with a shower of rain. We stopped in the colonnade and went on in sunlight into the half garden and drank coffee and talked for an hour. And when we were children, that over here, when we were children staying at the Archduke's, my cousins, he took me out on a sledge and I was frightened. He said, Mary, Mary, hold on tight. We, and down we went. In the mountains, you feel free. So that is a very beautiful memory, a nostalgia, you can say. Something, the, the, something that you want to always cherish, so that cousins, their friendship, they are going, uh, they have got plenty of time for each other. There is a kind of picnic-like situation, sledging, and uh, Marie may be a small girl at that time, and so she might have been afraid. And then the Archduke, my cousin, he says that, uh, he said, hold, hold on, hold on, don't be afraid, I am here with you. They go down and down, the, the, down to the mountain and then he says, you feel free then because it's plenty of time. So that bright spot in this section, the wheel of the dead, you can see that it has been projected so, so well. See how many lines have been devoted to that frame, this frame. But it comes again to the end. End of end, that was the last line. I read much of the night and go south in India. So after the war, like I lost my cousins, my relations, I am lonely, nobody to talk to, I am a nervous person, I read my go south in India. So life is 
Then you have got the fourth frame. I suppose you are following spring, April is coolest, the wasteland is welcome. The, the April is coolest because I already told you why. The wasteland is the welcome uh, winter. Now then you find suddenly a memory, a memory of a bright life once upon a time, the cousins also, and also it comes immediately after the war, what happens that we know, that is contrast is there. Now we come to another section, the wasteland is the wasteland of the, the biblical wasteland, so to say, the biblical wasteland. So there what is it, you come, you come and there you have got a, a three, a reference to three biblical passages, see. You have got uh, Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah. You have the reference to Ezekiel. You have got the reference to Ecclesiastes. So you can see there is mixing and mingling of prophets and prophecies and biblical statements and ghostly situation. And what does the frame say? What are the books that cut? What branches grow under this stony rubbish? Now that is rhetorical question. What are the roots that clutch? No roots. What branches grow? No branches grow. So it is terrain. It's desert after the war. But the reference is tradition. Harping back to tradition. That is the biblical wasteland. And then he says, son of man. Me, you. Yes, okay. In that context, he is called the he is, he is led to a valley where there are dry bones. There's no life. So it's son of man, he says. What are the roots that clutch what branches grow under this ton of under this stony rubbish? Means nothing grows. Nothing grows. Son of man, you cannot say or guess for you only know a heap of broken images. So the world has now become a heap of broken images. Europe has become a heap of broken images, physically too. The destruction of buildings, the destruction of dams, destruction of structures, destruction of culture, destruction of all what you have been cherishing. So it is, you know, a heap of broken images where the sun beats. The dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief. The dry stone, no sound of water. So all this symbolic of life, all this what we have said now, trees with branches and flowers, then there are insects, Suppose in springs, if we have got plenty of harvest, then you can see insects moving and singing. Like no such thing. Then there is no water. The stone is no water. There's no water. So it's dry everywhere. It's a desert like situation. So it says, Son of man, you cannot say or guess. For you only know a heap of broken images where? What kind of images where? Where? The sun beats. Scorching sun's rays fall. That is why in the next line you say the red rock. That is, uh, that is my opinion. Some people say it is, the rock is red because it is smeared with blood of soldiers or civilians as a result, consequence of the war. Some others say that it is the Holy Grail, the symbol of the Holy Grail, which we will see later, discuss about. So here it is. The dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, the dry stone no sound of water, only there is shadow under this red rock, coming under the shadow of this red rock, I I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you it is memories striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you hope so I will show you something different from this 
That means what? There is no nostalgia, no hope. It's gone. Gone with the wind whistle. I will show you something different from not the memory of the past or desire for a future. Something different from this. I shall show you fear. A handful of dust. I shall show you fear in a handful of us. What is it? What we expect, what is going to happen to this world is nothing but fear. We are all gripped by fear. So we are, that is a kind of, what we must say, a, a, an emotion that will destroy you. Fear. You are afraid. You cannot move, you cannot talk, you cannot go around. You cannot speak to a, another person. You are afraid of everything. So I will show you fear in a handful of us. There is also, we can go back to the symbol of Kumi. She held a handful of dust. And then she asked, when Apollo asked her what he wants, said, I want as many years of life as I have grains in my, uh, grains of sand in my hand. So the dust within that, you have got grains of sand. And she was granted that, but she forgot to ask for eternal youth, and so she is now dying. So I shall show you fear in a handful of us. So there is nothing to hope. Nothing is going to happen also. You can simply live in a world and kind of death in life or life in a uh, death in life. You are living physically, but you are not. There is no life, there is no spirit, there is no soul, anima, Latin is the soul, the life, the life force that is, that has disappeared. So I show you fear in it and Then comes two other, yes, the fourth one is the biblical wasteland. Biblical wasteland, wasteland, W. The biblical wasteland. And the fifth and the sixth terms you can see two failed loves, tragic loves. That is, fifth one is to stand and I saw. To stand and then I saw. That is, fresh where the wind, the high masu, main Irish skin, oh, whales do. The wind blows freshly. My Irish sail, the wind blows, fresh wind blows homeward. My Irish sweetheart, why are you waiting? Why don't you come? The background, you know, that Christian is wounded and he is waiting on the shore here in England and waiting for his beloved to come. I saw she has got a miraculous powers of healing. And so she, she is, he is expecting that she will come any moment. But uh, the person who is watching, the person who was holding the binocular, not no binocular, but something like that, those days, he says, not seen. There is no white sail. The guy, the 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 sign for her arrival is that if the ship bears the white sail. She will be coming. There is nothing of that sort. So he says, toward the end of the Hyacinth passage, no? oh, it wouldn't leave, that's me. The sea is old and empty. She is not coming. So that is failed love, tragic love. And now the sixth, sixth spring is the Hyacinth girl. Hyacinth girl, their love, the Hyacinth girl. You gave me Hyacinth I, first a year ago. They called me the Hyacinth girl. So one year ago, yet when we came back late from the Hyacinth garden, I could not speak, my eyes failed. I knew nothing, I was neither, I knew nothing, I was, I, I was, Neither alive nor dead, looking into the heart of light, silence. 
you gave me hyacinths a year ago and they called me the hyacinth. But what is the present situation? I cannot speak. I shall show you fear in a handful of dust. Here, to stand, fear in a handful of dust. Anxiously waiting, but nothing is seen. So he might be afraid and fear, he will die. The only hope is the cure that that I saw can bring, but she is not seen fear. I shall show you handful of fear in a handful of dust. I ask you, I will nothing, neither speak nor see. Looking into the heart of light, silence. What is the heart of light then? Some hope. You know, heart of darkness. There is a novel written by Joseph Conrad, where the Kutz at the end says, Horror, horror. So that is what uh, T.S. Eliot is now saying, Horror, horror. After the war, there is horror, horror. So I shall show you fear in a handful of dust. So he is showing fear in a handful of dust to two people already. And now we have got the way to leave the smear. So that is to be connected with the Wagner's opera, which is what they say is Santias Leader's quarter. Uh, that story of his soul and Tristan and I saw his Wagner's opera. Yes. Then, uh, which are Wagner's opera? Ah, yes. And so, here is the Hyacinth showing fear in a handful of dust. I shall show you, there is nothing to hope. All the past, you have got the past. You, you gave me Hyacinth first a year ago. That is the past, but what is the use? No, there is no point in thinking about that. You, my beloved, I saw you have the power of healing me, but what of that? It's not going to happen here. Nothing is going to materialize here. So, handful of dust here. Then comes the Madam Sosostis passage. Madam Sosostis, many people have many references like that. That is somebody says, the other way, details we will see later. But uh, modern sorceress could be a corrupt form of sorceress. Sorceress, sorceress, a witch. So modern sorceress can be a sorceress. So that is a corrupt form of this word. Could be. Because that is what she is doing. Uh, yes. Uh, then is Madame sorceress, famous clown, had a bad cold. She is very famous and she can break the future of other people. But what happens to her if she is suffering from a cold? So a bad cold. In case there is good cold and bad cold, I don't know. Bad cold means all the time you have a running nose and sneezing like this. Like this. After every prediction, every prophecy. And there is the civil, uh, uh, a civil, shadow of the civil. Sibyl was actually, as I remember when I was, we were discussing that she was the most famous of all the Sibyls, beloved of Apollo. Understand? But in this case, she is not even a shadow. Adam was the famous flavor and had a bad cold. Nevertheless, she is not to be the wisest woman in Europe. That is like the Marcanary saying, Brutus is an honorable man. Yet, Brutus is an honorable So it's like that, you know, isn't it? That is sarcasm. Sarcasm. Sarcastic remark. Because what is she doing? What she says is that I am frank to be fraud. That is the thing. With a wicked pack of cards. Tarot. Tarot cards. Wicked pack. The way is wicked. She has a bad cold. She is wicked. She has got a wicked pack of cards. This for so, cheating people, getting money, wasteland, another frame in the wasteland, fear also. And I kind of, she is instilling a sense of fear in all those people who gathered around her. 
He says, that is your card, the drowned Phoenician sailor. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Look, that is in title. Those are pearls, that is previous. Good old times, if somebody is, is drowned, what happens to him? There is a transformation. There is a transformation from the better. His eyes will become uh, the those are pearls that are his eyes look. But what about now? Now that by water section for them see forgot the cry of girls. He has been thrown into oblivion. Now change takes place, no transformation takes place. That is in the best See? So here what happens? Madam Susas was famous player, well, he had a bad call, nevertheless, he is known to be the wisest woman in Europe with the with the pack of wicked cards. Here, said she, is your card, the drawn tradition sailor. Those are pearls that were his eyes look. Of course, this is caught from cotton from the tempest. So the aerial song. So that's why I thought we will make an aerial survey of this section of the poem. <laughs> aerial So you are not going to deep into the poem line by line or word by word that we will do later. So there is Belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situations. Frailty thy name is born. Lady of the rocks, there is no such reference. There is I mean, there may be as well as I, you know, please don't misunderstand me, thinking that I am an omniscient person, no, not at all. So, Lady of, Lady of the Sea, Stella Maris, Star of the Sea, Stella Maris, you refer to Our Lady, Mother of Jesus Christ, Stella Maris, Lady of the Sea, Lady of Light, Lady. Queen of Heaven, but Lady of the Rock, maybe, it's because in this wasteland there are only rocks. So we have already seen huh? no tree, no cricket, no water, only there is shadow under this red rock coming under the shadow of this red rock and so you will find a, a lady of the red rock, the lady of situations. Lady of situations uh, is a fickle minded, maybe it's like that. That we'll see later. All these details we'll go in later after you also have a reading of this poem, this section. So, uh, here is the man with three stairs. Here is the wheel. That, the wheel, the man with three stairs is Fisher King. There is a direct reference to the Fisher King. That is the main Fisher King. There is that uh, mythical figure and uh, the main Fisher King is, you can see right from the very beginning to the end of the poem, that is an enveloping myth. The whole poem is enveloped in this myth, the Fisher King myth. Okay. Yes, and so you are saying, here is the meaning, that is fortune story. What you are today, you are rich, tomorrow another person is it? rich man becomes poor, I like it. Today you are leader, tomorrow you are a beggar. So that is we. Man with three stairs, here the wheel. He's the one night merchant. Smarna merchant comes later. Smarna merchant in the fire sermon. Yes, here is the one night merchant. Smarna merchant is notorious for homosexual activity. So, then here is the one night merchant. And this car which is blank is something that I am forbidden to see. Creating unnecessary mysterious trip. Some kind of supernatural situation is created there. It's a fake supernatural situation. So here is the um, man with the three stairs, the wheel, one eyed merchant, uh, the, the, this card which is blind, so I am forbidden to see. I did not find the hanged man. Hanged man? Maybe Jesus Christ, the holy hope, and that she doesn't find. See, fear the big one. 
Why should you fear death by water? Because if you die now, if you are if you are death is by water now, it has no effect. But those control days, you would become pearls. Your eyes will become pearls. So that comes fear death by water. See that? I see crowds of people walking around in a ring. That is again in the soon you will see that that image again. Walking around in no purpose. When you are walking around in a ring like this, what is the name? Well, you come, you reach where you start, you reach where you start, you reach where you start. That is there's no, no purpose. They are going there and then again coming, going there, again coming back. Nothing happens. So, this. so I see crowds of people walking down the ring. Thank you. Why? Why should she thank you? Because she has collected money from them. She has collected whatever she wanted from them. And she also created a, 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 an atmosphere of mystery, a ghostly atmosphere. Fear by what? Forbidden to see. See the words used there. And then uh, Bella Ron, Lady of the Rocks, never had one. So, thank you. If you see dear Mrs. Sekita, tell her I'll bring the horoscope myself, for one should be careful this way. So, so it says, there is already a, a what you must call a, a, a SMS. <laughs> As our today's uh, vocabulary, we can say an SMS from a lady, and her name is Mrs. Sakita. So she said, I will not have a spoke to you because sometimes you will do something, some uh, some changes, some create some problems for her. So I will do all this. And that's that part ends. Sometimes I even think that it's a kind of drama. What you call, uh, it has got a meta theatrical effect. Sometimes I think like that. So also with that uh, cousins, see. As if you think that this is something, a drama, a play within a play. Isn't it? But at the same time, the, all these different frames, they merge. They merge together to create a, a total effect. This. That is very interesting. When we come to the when when we come to the this. So here seventh frame is Madame Sosospus. Madame Sosospus. So Madame Sosospus. Or as I told you, according to me, it is a character from a sorceress. Because what is she doing? She is doing the work of a sorceress. Madame Sosos. Then we come to the eighth frame in the section, unreal city. Here again we can see like the sterile desert of biblical desert, of this biblical wasteland. Here you see the wasteland, the waste, the city wasteland. What is it? Unreal city. And the brown fog, fog of a winter dawn. I see crowds of people walking down London Bridge. I see crowds of people walking down London Bridge. Sighs short and infrequent were exhaled. What an infrequent very excellent and each one fixing his head upon his feet. They walk in. They will not give their face like this. Because each one is concerned about himself. Each one is afraid. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. Instead of going after spiritual remedies, people are going after fraudulent remedies. Like Madame Sasasu. Instead of going to uh, searching for real remedies, they are going with the searching for they are going after fake remedies. Like fake doctors. 
is not going to the doctor, say, is qualified, you go to the quacks. He is a quack. So, unreal city. The city, what happens that there is mixing and mingling. See, like, this is Elliot City, London, Charles Baudelaire City, Paris, because there is reverence to him, and Dandy's Inferno. All the three mix and mingle, and we don't know what begins, where is the beginning, where is the end, where one ends, where you know, that is the structure. Wasteland is the greatest modern poem. See, any critical work you see, they, they will all be saying that greatest, the Wasteland is the great, greatest modern poem. So, the three things coming together. London city, Paris, and the inferno. This is, that is, unreal city under the brown fog of a winter door. I see crowds of people walking down London Bridge. Sighs short and infrequent were exhaled, each one fixing his eyes upon his feet. So many I had not thought that had done them so many. Rolled over hill, down King William Street, where St. Mary would not kept the hours with a dead sound on the final stroke of night. The sound of the church bell is dead. Some say this was the last bell. The last bell usually is not a dead sound, but it is a. <laughs> if you can see the last bell in your college, is it that sound? Here the belly also is that. The sound of the bell. The, uh, this, uh, the bell that rings uh, beautifully should be now, now. But this is no. 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 I shall show you fear in a hand for purpose. Is it that? A Dracula side situation. Yes. Then, that is the eighth and Now the ninth is the Stetson. Famous Stetson. Who is the Stetson? You make your research. <laughs> See, I'm not concerned very much about Stetson. There I saw one I knew and stopped in crying, Stetson. You who were with me, the ships in Mele, that is reference to the Punic Wars between Rome and Carthage. By the by suggesting this, that is in the BCs, by suggesting referring to the Battle of Mele, what Thesaurus is saying is that all the wars are the same. Whether it is BC, whether it is AD, whether it is now, uh, 1914, whether well, it is 1940 or 14, see. So, ships in Mili, naval battle it was, that is ships in Mili. There I saw one I knew and stopped in crying, steps and you who were with me in ships in Mili. That corpse she planted last year, has it begun to sprout or has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? So that is the... Tenth free. What is it? The corpse. Planting of the corpse. The corpse passing. So it's angering that. So it has got two, two dimensions you can, three dimensions you can say. So one is burial of the dead. Here is the burial of the dead. Christian burial of the dead implies resurrection. So that is denied here. The anthropological ritual, burial of the dead, burial of the dead gods, images, effigies, Osiris, Antis, Adonis, that is anthropological ritual. There also there is implied is a revival, means rebirth, resurrection. When the spring season, these effigies will be taken out. 
At the end of the harvest, they will be thrown in the river, uh, river Nile or the Nile or they will bury these effigies. But there is resurrection. But what about the wasteland? No scope. So it is decades. The dead body is decayed. There is no. But now what is happening? Out of the decay, small plants are sprouting. That is what it is asking. That course she planted last year, the garden has it begun to sprout, not the corpse, as well I think, something, taking it as a manure, some, uh, a bed from where small living things can sprout, small plants, and important, say weeds can sprout. What has the sudden frost disturbed this bed? Sudden frost. What is sudden frost again? Even dead bodies have no scope of decay. Dead body has the right to decay. It's a fundamental right of every dead body to decay. And that doesn't that doesn't happen in this. This is what has the sudden first mister? Oh, keep the dog far hands. That is front to man, or he will dig it away with his nails. So a body, that body which is not decayed because of the frost, sometimes dogs may take it out and it will be another problem in the wasteland. Even that body is going to be a problem in the wasteland. Isn't it? Then the last and the eleventh frame is my double. My double. This is a mystery actually. I, after going through this section, I think that it's a mystery. He says, after this, after this he pauses. And he says, has the seven one? Oh, keep the dog far hands, that is fun to me. Or he will dig it up again with his nails. <laughs> he feels some kind of eerie feeling. And he says, you, 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 you. Hippocrite lecture on Semblan, on the Montferre. Mont Semblan, this is my double. My brother, you hypocrite leader. So here, that mystery is, there is an unraveling of the mystery. Who is speaking to whom? Eliot is speaking to himself. Eliot is speaking to his alter ego. It's a split personality, the poet and the listener. Speaker is TSME, the listener is speaker. Is I don't get worried about all this thing because that's my opinion. Once you saw, you accept this, you know. There's no multiplicity of voices. Also, it agrees with this poetic theory. Poet is not an expression of personality, but it is the escape from personality. Or poetry is not an expression of your emotion, but it is an escape from it. So your emotions escape from you. And who receives that? Another self. This is one self and this is another self. And also this another self is you are also just like that self. My brother. My double, my brother. Now this last point, the eleventh frame, that is something. Understand? You go through, go through critical works, and, but before that, you must have your own ideas. You can take any book, any guide, any lecture. You can attend the YouTube lectures. Other, you can attend. You can uh, notes. You can refer. You can refer old, dilapidated, forgotten notes. Whatever you, whatever you get, so old, forgotten battles, and, uh, old, forgotten things and battles long ago. Such so you can read. I have no objection to all these things. But first you must form your own idea. So quickly, to sum up, the, the burial of the dead. That is, title is taken from Book of Common Prayer used to buy and you can just that's the right when they are when they bury the dead people, they say some prayers, a set of prayers. So that is the title, the burial of the dead, taken from the Book of Common Prayer. Used to be the Anglicans. But here the burial of the dead, I told you know, here, come here. This burial of the dead, burial of the anthropological uh, ritual, there is chance for revival. 
Christian stands for revival and the resurrection, but that corpse he planted last in the garden has begun to sprout. The corpse is not scope, it's gone. Gone forever, gone with the wings. So that is the burial of the dead. Here in this context, then my double it is speaking to his other self. That's what I think. Now we can discuss. So we will have a after going through this poem, I have shown you different frames so that we can be one after another and see how these things have been um, one merging the event. Well, the thing is that you know it is like this. You one one idea comes that is carried out to another idea. Again that is carried out to another idea. Or if I tell you something, I may be wrong. There are eleven objective correlatives in this section. Objective correlatives for the wastelands. So with this, I will stop here today for the time being. I expect that you will all be doing some, some original work and come back in the next class for a detailed discussion, land by land, word by word. Till then, bye.